We hope you've enjoyed a month of fantastic finishes. Now it's time to create some more. For Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I'm Dave McCann. We will see you Saturday night on Countdown and again next Tuesday for more AFR on BYU TV. Now, BYU football with Kalani Sataki is coming up next. Have a great week, everybody. See you Saturday. Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. The season opener at Arizona is four days away, and the countdown to kickoff is in full swing here in Studio C. Kalani is here. Matt Bushman is here. Preston Hadley is here. And so too are BYU football fans ready to get the 2018 season underway as BYU Football with Kalani Sitake starts. Low shotgun. Scott by Bushman. Touchdown Cougars. Squally. Midfield 40. 30. 20. Oh, Canada. Rashid Johnson. Johnson. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I hit a fumble and the Cougars recover. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Cougar Nation, and welcome to another season of BYU Football with Kalani Sitake here in Studio C at BYU TV. It is a simulcast. We are also live on BYU Radio, and great to have you with us for another season. And Cougar fans, if you want to join us in our studio here at this week's show, every week we'll do this. You go to BYUcougars.com slash Sitake Show to request seats. Go there after 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain Time to get seats for our broadcast. And you can also join the conversation by submitting questions for tonight's guests, which include tight end Matt Bushman and safeties coach Preston Hadley on Twitter using hashtag Satake Show as well as by going to the Facebook and the Instagram accounts for BYU TV Sports. And now to help kick off his third season as the head coach of the Cougars, please welcome in the head coach of BYU football, the former fullback, the BYU fan for life, Kalani Satake. Good to see you. How are you? Okay, I can give five to all of you, but I don't have time. Or do we? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm, okay. I'm already sitting, sorry. <laughs> well, nothing uh, beats opening week and uh, opening day. Here we are, another season of the show, and uh, fans are ready to roll. Yeah, let's go. I can't wait. Uh, it's been a long off season, and um, obviously our fans are excited, so we're ready to go to the desert and have some fun. You've been saying for a while that you wish game day was closer and closer. Now that it's this close, you feel like you're ready to go? Yeah, I wish it was tomorrow, though. <laughs> so it's close, and, and our players have been, um, you know, amped up, ready to play. And uh, it, it was really good for us in our off season and in fall camp. And so, um, really proud of our players, and really happy that we have the best fans in the world. And um, just really looking looking forward to, to entertaining them and seeing what we can do, and, and if all the hard work paid off, which I think it will. You've been into Arizona game prep now for a few days. That followed a camp in which a lot of work got done, including naming a starting quarterback. You wanted a guy to go out and win that job for you, and Tanner Mangum did just that. Yeah, he did. And, and um, you know, Zach Wilson made it really hard for him. But um, I don't think it's anything that Tanner was lacking more than what Zach was doing and it elevated his game. But I think the competition allowed Tanner to, to um, focus on a lot of things that, that could help him improve as a person and as a player. And... Uh, Changed his body. I mentioned before that he changed himself physically, but I think he's ready mentally. I think he's ready to go. And uh, I think him being a senior, um, there's a huge sense of urgency. And then the competition has made him step up and, and compete. And he knew going into it that I was comfortable in naming a true freshman as a start starting quarterback. And uh, that put a lot of pressure on him, which is good because fo the game of football is pressure. And I thought he answered the call really well and, and performed well in our scrimmages, our live work and then all our, all our drills that we did and our 11 on 11 during fall camp. And as you and Coach Grimes have said, nothing that Zach did poorly is that Tanner went out and won it. That said, what did Zach do to really impress you and push Tanner the way he did? Well, I think having that extra spring was really good. He graduated early from high school and came in and learned the system. And so it's a, it was a new system. He was just new to college football. But um, I think they all started from, you know, with a clean slate, everyone on offense. and. 
Zach was able to take advantage of his reps. He had great, did a great job in spring ball, and we knew going into after spring ball that we would only have enough room for a uh, certain type, you know, for three guys to compete, and then we knew that we'd have to uh, narrow it down to two, and uh, we just wanted the, the right one to win it, and the timing wasn't really important as much as um, if they actually do it, you know, so nobody wants to go into the season um, not having a quarterback name, but if, if we were, weren't able to get one, then we would have to play with two, and I'm just glad that Tanner stepped up and, and, and showed that he was the starting quarterback. Now we get our first look at the new look BYU offense when the first snaps are made on Saturday night down in Tucson. And one of the advantages you have over Arizona right now is kind of the element of the unknown. They don't know what to expect necessarily from BYU or a Coach Grimes offense. But what are some things that you or that maybe are safe to say, fair and safe to say about what you hope this group does here in 2018? Well, I think you establish our identity. And I think we know what we want to get done and, and um, don't want to give away a lot of our game plan. But um, it, there's a reason why I hired an offensive line coach who's probably one of the best offensive line coaches in college football as our offensive coordinator. And so uh, we built a lot of our strength off of, the, off of him and what he can do. And he added a guy that, that he coached in Ryan Pugh at O-line. And offensively, we'll start from there and we'll, we'll put all the pieces around a, a physical line and see what happens. And I think that I think we'll be able to find our identity there. We, we know what we were, we've been doing since spring and fall camp, we know the guys that we have going into the games, the, the weapons that we have, and um, I think it gives us a lot of versatility. And you look at the background of the coaches in that room, um, there's, there's a lot of different film that people have to watch and prepare for, yeah. and uh, we're excited. I'm I, you know, listening to them and, and the game plan. I'm really excited about our game plan against Arizona. Looking at the O-line in particular for a quick second, uh, size and strength and, and cohesion, all those things coming together where you like the group you've got here in the starting five? Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, Coach Pugh's uh, mentioned before that he's not um, afraid to, to rotate guys in there. And some of the stuff we're asking all linemen to do is it's, a, it's taxing on the body. And um, so I think he feels comfortable. We're traveling um, 10 or 11 guys. And uh, I think he's going to, you know, I think he plans to use uh, a good number of them. And so that will give us some, some good work. And I think the guys ex worked extremely hard to get big. I keep going back to Thomas Schof. You know, he was 270 pounds last year, and we're trying to add more weight on him. And he's walking around now at 305, and that's really good for us. You know, so um, I think uh, the line's a lot bigger. It took some time, but um, in the weight room, a couple hours, uh, a couple of years of working really hard and, and working on their nutrition, uh, we made some changes. And, and Tom Homo's given us some some money and some opportunities to get more focus on nutrition and our off-season conditioning and things, so I think that's going to pay off. It, it, they look different. You've seen them. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully they look and they can play just as good as they look. And that's talking complimenting 300-pounders. Yeah. <laughs> good, so. Look good, play good. Uh, yeah. Defense. Uh, <coughs> lots of old faces in new places on defense. So your linebacking core looks to be a strength, certainly. Uh, Butch Pau'u is joined by a former safety moving up and a former D-lineman moving back when you got Zane and uh, Sione joining him. Yeah, it's a good group. A lot of speed. I mean, uh, it's weird because Sione, you, you, you don't think moving a DN to linebacker would actually increase your speed, but he's, a, he's more of a linebacker type anyways, you know. I, I think one of his skills is that he can rush a quarterback, but um, when, when, you're, when he's a DN, he's a smaller DN, and when he's a backer, he's a big backer that can run. So uh, we'll be able to utilize his pass rushing skills because we're in blitz linebackers, and mm -hmm. he can actually run and cover, and he, he has a good instincts uh, as a linebacker. I think it fits in more, especially at the next level. And so um, that was a good move for us. Moving Zane from safety to, to flash um, to replace Fred maybe doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but Zane's fast and he can cover a lot of ground and he's physical and he has good instincts and, and I think he's a natural player at that position. Um, you know, he's a, he's a guy that ran a 10-6, 10, 10 in, in high school and that shows on the field, and, and he's added a good, good amount of, of muscle mass, um, and he's not afraid to hit. So I think, I think what we're asking to do, for him to do at that position, it requires a lot of versatility, and the guy that can be in the box and, and hit with the alignment would run with the slot receivers, and he fits the bill, so that's why we made that move. And he's only gonna do it because it's, it's gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to be at the best 11 on the field and match up with what we're seeing from the offense that we're facing, especially on Saturday. Okay, special teams note. Uh, new names to know. Uh, you've added a highly recruited place kicker <coughs> to stop his mission in Skylar Southam and a punter uh, from Australia who's going from uh, Aussie rules to uh, NCAA rules for the first time, and that's, uh, that's Danny Jones. There's your group. 
Yeah, and um, you know, been really happy with Rhett and his punting in fall camp. So um, I think that's what, that's what he was naturally as a it was a punter, and he had he had a, uh, a a kiwi in his way with Johnny punting all the time. So um, Rhett will probably give us a little bit more control on the fake feel, uh, fake punts. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but I think he's I mean Johnny's gonna hear this and he's gonna be texting me. I know that. But, um, I just had to take a shot at him. <laughs> but no, but Rhett's doing a good job. And then I think um, Danny's just so new to the game that we're kind of working him into it. But uh, I think you'll see him on Saturday. Um, hopefully we don't see any of those guys punting at all on Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, but just in case we have to, they'll be ready. And then Skyler is a great place kicker. I think he's, he's young. He's only a freshman. But I mean, he was set to come to BYU no matter who was the head coach. And, and he graduated early from high school, so he can go on his mission and return and be ready to be the starting kicker. And he worked extremely hard to get himself ready to be a place kicker. Um, Andrew Mickelson's doing a good job with the kickoff duties. And then we have Mitch Harris as our snapper and Gavin Fowler as our holder. So I think it's a good group, a lot of experience and a lot of, a lot of playmaking ability in that group. Right. Maybe some fakes along the way. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right, break time. For your day-to-day -day <coughs> Cougar Sports play-by-play, -play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, it's a look ahead to the to-do list in Tucson. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake. Mom, no, I have a date tonight. And hey, Sam. I'm... Kim? What are, you, what are you doing here? I don't want you two lovebirds eating trash, so I invited her to dinner. Mom, this is my ex-girlfriend. I know, but I like her better. Plus, if you don't go out, you can save money. For the wedding. BYU Meal Plans. Make your own choices. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU at Arizona, 9.30 Eastern, 7.30 Mountain, Saturday on BYU TV. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Stanford women's volleyball game Friday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. BYU football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life, and by Nissan, innovation that excites. We are back on our season debut. BYU football with Kalani Satake here in Studio C at BYU TV. Season opener Saturday, BYU at Arizona, which, of course, Kalani means an up-close look at quarterback Khalil Tate, a guy on everyone's Heisman Trophy short list to start the season. He's good. Really good, and um, he can run. I think he's uh, really haven't seen him throw a lot, but um, some of the throws that he's made have been some big-time throws that in film last year. And, uh, he's just really smooth and he's calm under pressure, so we just need to apply more pressure and see how calm he can be. But um, he's played against some really good defenses, and uh, you know, I mean, he's just run, he runs by them like it's nothing. So it's going to be important for us to keep him contained and 
uh, not let him get out as, as much as I know he wants to. Now, Arizona doesn't know a lot of what to expect from your offense, but you have a pretty good sense of what a Kevin Sumlin offense and a Noah Mazzoni offense looks like. You've coached against those guys, in particular, Noel. You, you've coached defenses against his looks before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you see when you see what you think Arizona is going to bring you on on uh, Saturday? Well, I think I think they're going to push the tempo. I mean, that's what we've prepared for, and um, I think they're going to. You know, I I don't think they just want to be a, a run team, but I think they're going to try to establish the run game and. Uh, mix in a lot of RPOs with the run pass option and um, you know hopefully they hopefully they prove me wrong and just you know get into I formation and run power football because <laughs> that'd be fun too so <laughs> if they're watching this just do whatever you want but um, we, we've kind of prepared for everything and um, you know there's always going to be some things that are different that we probably haven't seen before but I don't think it's going to be anything too extravagant um, they, they, they know kind of our style on defense, too, and they, they're familiar with what we do. We know Marcel Yates as the defensive coordinator and what he's done. So uh, it really is not about the coaches, it's about the players. And, and I think coaches sometimes think, uh, need to remember that it's not what we know, it's what our players know. And so this is where the teaching and the coaching really comes into play because on Saturday you just let them roll and see what happens. You and BYU have an interesting history with Arizona. Of course, your first ever game as BYU head coach was against the Arizona Wildcats down in Arizona a couple years ago. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, this made it fun. Yeah, we put in a true freshman that, you know, was wasn't expecting to kick a game winning field goal, but uh, had the eyes on him. He was ready to roll. You know, he's ready to kick it. And <laughs> he was accepted, accepting of the challenge and nice control uh, of your sideline, by the way, there. Yeah, that is and a little right less there, control here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of guys. I, I think I popped the shoulder out on that. Celebration, <laughs> so. I'll do it again. Let's let's get some more celebrations. I'd love to pop I'll both my shoulders out. Right Interestingly, including that game, uh, two of the last four meetings have come down to last-second field goals, which is kind of interesting. And uh, of course, Harvey has good experience from 2007 here, beat Arizona 20 to seven, and that was a season opener as well. So some good history. Let's take a look at how the uh, teams stack up against each other coming into the season statistically a bit. Presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility, the most exciting tech you own is now in your driveway. And here's a little bit of a look at uh, what both teams did last season. Again, BYU winning three of its last five to finish. A lot of new coaches on both sides. You mentioned Marcel Yates as the D.C. is back, but I think every other defensive coach on that staff changed up in the offseason at Arizona. Yeah, they did, and, and um, Marcel's a great coordinator and smart guy, and, and uh, they, they have a really good coaching staff, and so, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really good challenge. I, I think we have a great staff, too, so it'll be fun, and right now is the time for us to prep our guys, but... You know, I just, I, it's an honor for me to just be a coach with these young men and just really looking forward to seeing these guys perform. I've said it over and over again, I don't think anybody's worked harder than our team. And I can, I can say that with uh, confidence because I know they haven't, they, they don't, teams didn't do what we did in fall camp, they didn't do what we did in, in the off-season conditioning. And so um, that already makes us the off-season national champ. <laughs> so. What do you talk about? You talk about doing a lot in, the, in, in camp. You guys hit a lot, right? We did. I mean, yeah, it was physical. And going into it, I thought, you know, the, the thought was to keep our, I mean, I've had coaches say that they just want to keep their team healthy. And um, I get that. But I, I just feel like healthy wasn't really the main reason. We just got to play football and get better at it. And um, if, you, if you want to get better at drills, then you, you, you practice what you want to get better at. And if it's drills and one-on-one and things like that, you'll be good at that. But if it's 11-on-11 11 11 football, then that should cross over. And we did, if you asked our players what our best, what our most work drill was this, this fall camp, they'd tell you it was 11-on-11 11 11 football. And the risk of that is getting guys hurt. We got guys banged up, but um, I think the, the risk is worth the, the reward. We'll see, you know, but I, I saw a lot of guys step up and compete. It's hard to choose a starter in any position when you're not playing real football, when you're when, when there's not a threat of getting hit or, or you know, or, or anyone coming at aggressively at you, even for an old lineman to, to block a D lineman, if they're not going to tackle the quarterback, it's a different look. And so uh, we did that. We came out pretty healthy. And the injuries that we had that were really, um, that were long-lasting injuries weren't even in 11-on-11 11 11 football. They were like non-contact drills. So we should have just done 11 on 11 the entire time. <laughs> Got out totally clean. Yeah, I wish yeah. we would have done that last year and everyone would have been healthy. So, <laughs> way we go.
All right, as we head to break, uh, we are telling you that you can once again enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen in a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn by Marriott in Provo. Coming up after the break, he is joining us live in Studio C, Matt Bushman. Visiting with the coach and me and taking your questions, this is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. Iamflash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. Okay, everyone, gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. Secret, it's important, but I think I can trust you. It will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say, it's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! Girl, you know it! Please, no! No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio C are... Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. 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 It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> I did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. Mangum, top for Bushman. Bushman's got it. First catch of the career. All kinds of time over the middle. Bushman into Utah territory to the 42. Fires Gatt wide open. It's Matt Bushman for a touchdown. Second touchdown in as many weeks. Timing pattern end zone. It is. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Use hashtag Satake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions coming up a little later on in the show. There are a handful of BYU players on the roster who hail from the state of Arizona, but only one who calls Tucson home. So this weekend, it's a homecoming for our first guest who last season, as a freshman, led BYU in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. He's back for his sophomore season and back on the Satake Show. Please welcome Matt Bushman. <laughs> All right, so we talk about the Arizona guys, and you're the one Tucson guy. Yep. Uh, how much of your life was lived in Tucson? So I grew up in New Orleans until fourth grade, beginning of my fourth grade year in elementary school. And then Hurricane Katrina hit. We moved to Tucson to live with my grandparents for a couple years. So from fourth grade on, I lived in Tucson. So a couple years became a long time. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So you ended up a high school called Sabino High School. Those from down there know it pretty well. Tell us a bit about Sabino and about uh, being an athlete there. Yeah, so Sabino, there's a rich history of football success down there. My uncle Quinn, who played at BYU, also played there when they won the state championship. So, um, Is that Quinn Gooch? Quinn Gooch. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I think they won the last state championship. There are other times where we made it to the state finals. I never, I made it, the furthest I made it was to the semis. So we were pretty good. We were always good. One of the better teams in Tucson. But once we got to Phoenix, they would always outman us. So, um, yeah, Sabino is a great school. It's, it's getting a little bit smaller now, but when I was there, it was still like a football powerhouse. It was really fun to be an athlete there. And I played three sports, so I was always just 
living the dream. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. There are a lot of ties to you and Dennis Pitta by how well you played last year. He gets brought up a lot. And Dennis was a guy who was a wide receiver in high school, kind of grew into tight end. Were you kind of the same way? or? Yeah, yeah. So I was actually a quarterback my freshman year. I got brought up to varsity my sophomore year to play quarterback, be a backup. Mm. But we had a really good starting quarterback, so they just said, I just asked if I could try wide receiver out. Um, and then that just stuck. And then once I got bigger and got a little bit stronger, they put me in some tight end sets. So then I was classified as a tight end my senior year. But yeah, mostly, mostly a receiver. Okay, Kalani, uh, you've used the word special when you talk about Matt Bushman. Remember, I see interviews, it's like you say, he's a, he's a special player. What makes him special in your perspective? Um, he has such a unique way of getting open, and um, he has great control of his body. He's a big guy, you know, that uh, he's, he's put on some good weight, you know, but his, the, uh, his ability to catch footballs is something that's special that you haven't seen around, and we challenged him to become a better blocker. And so it just seems like the special part about him is whatever you ask him or demand from him or challenge him with, he's willing to do it and step up with it. So um, I know he's taking on a new role in life, but um, right now his, his, uh, his role as a tight end has been, you know, he's, he's a leader. He's a guy that's played a lot, of, a lot of snaps, but our other guys look to him because he's a guy that's not afraid of any challenge. And I think that's just what, what I love about him. He's just, he's just gonna, he's gonna make, if something's a weakness, he's gonna make it his strength. It's only a matter of time. So is the new role in life that of husband? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 So uh, a few <laughs> minutes ago, uh, your wife Emily slipped into Studio C and took a seat over there. Right. And how long have you guys, you got married really recently. How long have you been married? It's been a little over two months. A couple two days months. Over. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And those who are really observant on the group photo might have recognized the guy standing to your left in one of those photos, and that's Emily's dad. Chad Lewis, of course, Emily Lewis plays uh, on the volleyball team. I guess we'll call her Emily Bushman now. Uh, plays on the volleyball team here at BYU. And of course, her dad's Chad, a lot of people know. And mom, Michelle, played a volleyball here. So it's an athletic family of sorts. Right. Um, how did you guys meet? And um, when did it uh, get really serious? So we met at the salad bar of Legends Grill, actually. <laughs> that was the. Um, so I got back from my mission, and one of her teammates kind of mentioned that I was coming home. So then we, I'd see her around campus, and I would want to talk to her from the first week of school when I got here, but then I just kind of wimped out. So then finally, we were both at Legends, and I said, all right, she's at the salad bar. I had already gotten my salad. So I had to act like I was going to get a refill and just introduce myself. We, need, we didn't date for a while after that, but then towards the end of my baseball season, um, we started playing sand volleyball with some, some of her teammates, some of my teammates, and that's where we hit it off. Did you, I mean, you're a decent player, volleyball-wise? I'm not too good, so. <laughs> I got embarrassed a few times in front of them, so it was fun, though. When athletes marry athletes, what's, what's maybe one of the best things about it from a mentality standpoint, knowing what the demands are on each person, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, we both understand that college sports are tough. I mean, they're an awesome team. They're ranked number eight in the country, so they have high demand. Their coach demands a lot from them. Our coaches demand a lot from us, so just understanding each other's lifestyles and standpoints, that really helps, and just our schedules also. I mean, we... Last night I got home at almost 10 o'clock last night and it's tough. And she's only gonna be able to come to one of one home game, maybe the Utah game at the end of the year. So it's tough not seeing each other. Our, our schedules are opposites, but it's just nice understanding, being able to understand each other's lifestyles and um, adapting to that. Kalani, you said that uh, their offspring are already committed to you somehow. They already did yeah. It, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Matt or Emily know it, but Chad had already promised. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so all, all the sons will come to me, and then the daughters can go to, can go to the volleyball or basketball. Okay. Or if they're good enough, they can play football too. So. <laughs> now, last year, Matt, you did become the first BYU tight end since Dennis Pitta in 2009 to lead the team in catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Name Dennis Pitta doesn't get tossed around a lot, uh, you know, without referring to excellence. Uh, and and what do you think allowed you to come in as you did, and right from the get-go, stop a mission, have the kind of year you did? Um, well, I mean, from the from the start, I always wanted to just go out and do my best, whatever role was was necessary. And I mean, when I first started spring ball, I, it was rough. I was couldn't catch, couldn't block. It was just such a fast pace. Everything was going on, just rushing through my head. So. It took me some time to adapt, but then once I started feeling comfortable, it was just playing football again. And luckily I was able to get a spot where I was able to get playing time and have an opportunity to make plays. And 
that just felt natural. And I mean, this year it's more demanding with blocking and everything. I mean, I'm trying to get better at that. And I've, I feel like my technique has gotten better. There's still a lot to work on, but I just think it just feels natural. And I'm just trying to do what's best, trying to be a, a reliable person on the receiving end for our quarterbacks and help our running backs make plays when I'm blocking. So um, I don't know if it's anything like I just came and I don't know, demanded something. It just felt natural and I was able to have the opportunity and get to play when I had the chance. Much more skill than luck, I think, certainly. Wednesdays at 8 o'clock Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on Behind the Mic with a weekly hour of in-depth conversation. That's Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. We've got more with Matt Bushman straight ahead. When we come back, we'll go to our live audience and uh, see what I have for Matt Bushman here as we continue on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Back after this. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day. Like buying your first car, what a beaut. Or serving your mission, you come home and hop right into college. And then that magic day comes, marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey. But you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. Defend against Platt a lot, we have some fabulous people. First off, Stacy's best friend from high school, who also plays the tuba and the flute. Gildar? Yeah, definitely. And up next, we have Tori's secret admirer bird crush. Kookaburra! Yes! And also a smile that could crush a navy. Nitrous. <laughs> and we have a little something something that we found between Tori's toes. Pinkor. Yes! <laughs> Splat a lot. Mondays at 630 Mountain, followed by Studio C on BYU TV. Let's take a look at how our Cougars in the NFL are doing, and perhaps nobody's doing better than uh, Taysom Hill right now and doing it in so many different ways for the Saints. Special teams, tackles, fake punts, throwing touchdowns, <laughs> rushing touchdowns. Fred Warner, it looks like he's won himself a starting spot with the 49ers. You see also KVN and Michael Davis. Speaking of Michael Davis and Taysom Hill, this was a scene uh, over the weekend as Michael Davis on the right, Micah Hanneman on the left, and Taysom in the middle got together for a picture taken after the uh, Chargers-Saints game. How much were both you guys up to speed on what our former Cougars are doing? By the way. Do you get a sense of what's happening in the NFL with these guys? Yeah, it's cool to see them succeed. And um, yeah, it's just awesome to see those guys out there. Fred, I'm really proud of him to get that starting spot. I didn't know that. That's really cool. But um, yeah, Taysom's doing a great job. I know they love him down in New Orleans. There's just a lot of guys. Just Kalani Taysom is finding a way to stay on a roster by doing everything that they had ever wanted a guy to do, basically. Oh, yeah, he's a great athlete, and um, I, 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 I've said before, the NFL needs BYU guys. Um, we have great young men, and I think they can really help the NFL a lot, especially with the personnel that they have there. And looking at guys like that, and um, hope Matt and, and a lot of our other players aspire to be there, because I think it, they can really help the league and um, just represent uh, just goodness, you know? So. That's what I'm hoping, and, and um, it's good to see our guys out there representing. We, we need to get more out there and, and uh, get our guys ready. Okay, visiting with Matt Bushman, of course. Uh, Matt, you mentioned in the last segment uh, how your first spring went at BYU as a freshman. From then through your second summer camp, how do you think you progressed, and how was summer camp or training camp number two for you this past month? Um, this camp, I feel like I progressed in just not necessarily trying to get known, or I feel like last year I was able to um, the coaches already knew what I could do, so this year was more just trying to perfect things that, um, or just make some, like coach said, make some of my weaknesses strengths. Um, blocking, the coaches really challenged me on that. Um, just getting my first two steps in the ground, which is really important as a blocker, which I didn't, some things like you don't even know. Um, that's, but that's really important, and I've really worked on that, just my technique, trying to just be more physical, um, and trying to win. Defenses are playing man-to-man, -man, just try to get open, try to 
just try to get that space that's necessary to allow the ball to be thrown to us. After the freshman season you had last year, the hopes are it was kind of be like a rekindling of the tight end tradition here at BYU. How aware are you, were you of just what that position's meant to this school? And then how do you feel about the group of guys you've got to kind of bring that back maybe this year a little bit? I knew, I knew some about it when I, uh, when I was getting recruited and when I got here. Um, but I've learned so much more about it, just the legacy of all the tight ends that have come through BYU and succeeded. So it's always a little bit of pressure. Everyone wants to see the tight ends do well. So it was, it was fun to, to get the ball to the tight ends more last year. And this year, I mean, the group that we have, it's awesome. It's Alan Hol Holker, straight out of high school. He's done really well. He's, he's competed. Um, Moroni, Moroni's now healthy, and he's, uh, he's done well also. He's really smart in the, when we watch film. He just knows a lot of things about it. JJ, he's, he's an amazing blocker, and he's learning more and more how to catch and just run routes and stuff like that, so it's fun to see. He lost weight from last year, and he's pretty quick, surprisingly pretty quick, so that's really cool. And also, um, Adam Pulsifer. Addison, you added him or, to your Sorry, group. Addison, yeah. I said yeah. Adam. Yeah, Addison, they moved him to tight end, and he's just, just like JJ, just a really good blocker. Um, he's learning how, little by little, to run routes and catch and things like that, but he's a really reliable source on the blocking end. We've now split the Pulsifer boys up, Adam at linebacker and Addison now at, at tight end on opposite sides. After such a great season that you had last year, what's reasonable uh, to expect from you in, in 2018? I'll ask the same thing to Kalani, too. Um, I mean, I don't, want, I don't want to put out personal goals or things like that, but as long as our team switches, well, I mean, just reverses how we were last year. Last year, we, we just weren't very confident going into games. We didn't believe in ourselves that much. We tried to, but things just happened where it was, was kind of, it wasn't, football wasn't as fun as it should be. So this year, I just want to make sure our team is out there having fun, getting these wins that we deserve. Um, not throwing away the games when, when we should be winning them and upsetting teams that don't expect it, that when people don't expect us to win. So we have, we have an awesome schedule. And I think just the goal is just to believe in ourselves, be confident, know that we can play with anyone because we have the talent and just go out there and surprise anyone who is in front of us. Kalani, what do you expect out of Matt, the tight end group? Just what he said. I think Matt is a, is a great teammate and um, great leader. He's not really focused on his personal um, goals, how many catches he has. He's, he's about the team. He's been like that all camp. Um, for a starting tight end to spend that much time with um, the others, uh, he's a big reason why we can use more tight ends uh, is because he, he's been open in, in helping them and lead them. And so it helps to have, like Dennis Pitt was at practice yesterday, so it helps to have um, an All-American, All-Pro um, as your father-in-law. <laughs> but I think it also helps to have uh, our guys returning. Our alumni came by and Austin Colley was at practice. And just good for our guys to see the, the others that have been through there. And I think it's going to give them, he talked about confidence. I think Matt's a guy that, that uh, has confidence. We talked about as a team. That, that's why we worked differently and harder than we ever have. Uh, they have no reason um, to doubt themselves uh, now, knowing that they've, they've worked so hard for this and, and they're prepared well. And so uh, I think that will give them a lot of confidence going into this game. And that, the confidence will allow you to have a lot of fun. All right, heading to break. Looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's Click List. Order online and pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Our thanks to Matt Bushman coming up after the break. New safeties coach and former BYU defensive back Preston Hadley is joining us. Plus your questions for the Cougars head coach Kalani Satake. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake here in Studio C at BYU TV. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Chicken wings. I love you. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. 
We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This August, see the good in the world with exciting shows on BYU TV. Get ready to laugh because Studio C is on every Monday at 7 Mountain with all your favorite characters and hilarious antics. Get the inside scoop on BYU football with Dave McCann and a team of experts on After Further Review, Tuesdays at 5 Mountain. And experience the suspense as residents of Granite Flats unravel the mysteries within, Sundays at 5 Mountain. There's something for everyone here on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to the season debut of BYU Football with Kalani Sitake as the Cougars get ready for the Arizona Wildcats Saturday night in Tucson. By the way, we saw the mustache on Tanner Mangum in those shots. Mustache gone now. Uh, one of the new elements on our new season of Satake shows is the introduction of a fourth chair on the set as we get to know one of the staffers working alongside Kalani here in Provo. And our first such special guest is back at BYU after a few years up north at Weber State. And he returns to coach defensive backs where he once was starred as a defensive back. Please welcome to the show, safety's coach, Preston Hadley. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking away just for a little yeah. bit. Uh, I want to remind folks right off the start that you are a local kid, Pleasant Grove High School. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So bring us back in the day and life at PG. Oh, um, well, my family still lives in the same house. So uh, it's got some, put some, some good miles on the house. Um, <laughs> But yeah, everyone's still there. Grandparents are from Pleasant Grove. Great grandparents are from Pleasant Grove. Mom's from Pleasant Grove. Uh, Grandpa was the janitor at Pleasant Grove High. <laughs> you know, my dad, he's the he's the head custodian at my elementary school. So we got some some roots laid down there. So life is good in PG. All right, Utah County represent. Uh, let's take you from high school to BYU as a player. The path that you took to get uh, to BYU originally. Uh, so originally I, I went down to Snow College and I went down there on a leadership scholarship actually I wasn't recruited by anyone uh, for football uh, I went down to Snow College tried out for the football team the summer after I graduated and uh, was cut from the team uh, Went down anyways went to school for a semester and then I tried out again in uh, the following January in the winter and did spring ball with the team and uh, ended up making the team and uh, from there I you know, went on mission, came back, played two seasons, and I uh, was fortunate enough for uh, BYU to, to give me an opportunity to come play. Now, for as good a player as he was here, Kalani, not recruited out of high school, cut, and then makes it on his own kind of thing. What does that say about what kind of guy he is? The guy's resilient, and um, he has goals and dreams. And I think uh, watching him, the way he coaches, and the way he approaches life, uh, he's a great, great person to have around as a friend. But... Uh, this is awesome to have him as a coach, and he shared, you know, we have this thing where we're trying to share our, our, our feelings and, on finding your why, and um, hmm. Preston was able to tell the team his story, and uh, it's something that just, he just doesn't quit. He wanted to play at BYU, and so when he was on the field as a player, uh, it meant something, it meant way more than just any normal person, and now uh, he's going to feel it when he walks on that field as a coach, and the 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 magic that, that, that BYU is and that stadium is and, and what BYU football is all about. So I'm glad he's back and he, he fits what we needed right now our, with our defensive backs. You were such a good corner here at BYU. Um, when did you realize that, that coaching would be the next step in your athletics path? Um, well, it was, it was first through J, uh, Dwayne Busby. Um, towards the end of my senior year, uh, Dwayne just came up to me and he said, uh, you got to look into coaching. Uh, it might be something that uh, you would enjoy. And so I, I, you know, I thought about it more and more. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more I could picture myself doing that. And uh, so, so he was the first one to really plant that seed or, or really instill that thought. And then, you know, it's just it's interesting how um, how things just kind of come together, and you end up the going the places where you're supposed to be. We see those places right there, including including Weber State most recently. You guys had a lot of success up there. Congrats on that success, by the way. It was great. Well, thank you. It was a, 
we were led by a great head coach. So yeah. And now, now you're back. Where are you back? Where you belong? Back where you want to be? I, I feel this is where I belong, and uh, I'm grateful for all the the places I was able to go uh, prior to here. I loved uh, those experiences as well. Um, but BYU is is definitely my home, and uh, I'm I'm very grateful to be back here. Okay, uh, you're coaching the safeties, as we know. Uh, some of the guys we're going to see or maybe hear from most earliest are Austin Lee and Troy Warner and uh, Diane Gomolaku. Uh, beyond those guys, who else should we be keeping an eye out for? And if we were just to focus on maybe that group, maybe, uh, what do you get from each guy and, and, and how deep are you and do you want to be? Uh, so some other guys that weren't mentioned that are in the mix, um, you also have Sawyer Powell. Um, he's a, he'll be a senior. Sawyer and I actually played together, so it's, it's been a fun experience uh, working with him. Um, and so he'll bring some experience and, and some knowledge to the group and as, as well as athleticism. Um, we'll also have Isaiah Armstrong, who could be a swing guy as well. Um, he's done some, he's had, he's had flashes and done some good things throughout uh, fall camp. And then also with just uh, Tanner Jacobson, just uh, moved back to the defensive side of the ball. He's been rehabbing an yeah. injury all fall camp, but um, in, the next, in the next few weeks to come, I, I see him being able to be a contributor as well. So. Um, as far as Austin, Troy, and Diane, um, each of them bring a, a, a different and unique skill set. Um, I think Austin's a guy who hasn't been talked about enough, and I think because mainly he's he's you know he's battled injuries since his time uh, being here at BYU, but he's got a great story in just the path he took to get here, and uh, you know he's he's definitely kind of the uh, the the role model of the group. You know he's married, has two kids, and he he still manages to. To, to prepare harder than anybody and be a great teammate as well. So uh, Austin brings great leadership in that way. Uh, Diane and Troy, I, you know, a lot of us are well aware of what he can do, uh, of what both of them can do. You know, with the experience as a corner, uh, I think it, it makes us more athletic uh, back there as, as a safety group, uh, just with their experience having to cover and man coverage and be on their own. Um, and both of them are physical players as well. And so I think the safety position fits into to both of to what both their strengths are as players. Well, great preview of the position group and good to have you on our first show of the season. Appreciate it. And so too, Matt. Guys, hang tight as we head to break. Appreciate it. Mondays at 1 o'clock Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on the coordinator's corner with Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Mondays, 1 o'clock Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, head coach Kalani Sasaki. Call it a path. Or way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Okay, everyone, gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. It's a secret. It's important. But I think I can trust you. It will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say. It's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! Girl, you know it! Please, no! No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio CL. Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. 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 It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> I did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV.
Dylan Cauley, wide receiver, senior. Favorite movie, Anchorman. Favorite non-BYU sports team, Miami Dolphins. Bucket list place to go, Greece. Favorite music group or artist, Future. Favorite food, Mexican. Would I rather sing or dance? Definitely sing. Beach or mountains? Definitely the beach. Favorite TV show, Hard Knocks. Favorite non-football hobby, surfing. Favorite athlete, Michael Jordan. Biggest fear, clowns. Favorite superhero, Batman. Michael or LeBron? Definitely Michael. Favorite coach, Jack DeMooney. Welcome back to BYU Football of Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. That's a new segment we're calling the 40-second play clock. And I wonder if anyone can uh, beat Dylan Colley's time. I think he got it done in 22 seconds. Yeah, he's, he's, he, the guy is 100% in everything we do. And we, even at walkthroughs, we were telling him, it's like, we're not full speed here. He doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> Instead of run half speed or three quarter speed, he just goes 100% every time. So how good is it to have him back with this program? That's great. Uh, and and um, he says, uh, you know, he's a colleague, but he brings a, a unique perspective to everything. You know, even just uh, all the experience that he's had. I think he, he brings a lot of uh, leadership and a lot of experience to that, to that position group. And a Jack the Mooney shout out. Uh, yeah. One of the best parts of our weekly show is when Coach Sataki gets to a chat with uh, Cougar Nation. We ask the coach questions from our live audience and also social media as well. And let's uh, start in the studio over to our mic. And we go to Parker Flood. Parker, good to see you. Good. Lifelong fan, so we're good. But uh, my question, I'm from Ogden, Utah, by the way. Um, long travel, long way. But my question with you, for you, is with the recent depth chart unveiling, we see a lot of oars next to people's names. Could you give us some insight on what will go into deciding who will start and why? Um, probably when we get close to um, our game, game, game day, trying to establish uh, our identity, what we think will give us our strengths. But we put the oars in there because um, you'll see a lot of those bodies on the field and at different times, maybe together, maybe separate. It's, it's, it's just uh, you don't just play with 11 guys the entire time. We're looking at adding more um, personnel sets and having a variety in offense, and that's why well, you see a lot of it. If it was up to me, I, everything would be an or just to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Parker from O-Town. <laughs> right on. Thanks for the question. <laughs> from social media, at PPD52, uh, which moment was more surreal for you, walking into Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the first time as a player or as a head coach? Both. I, I was the guy that was, um, didn't have, we didn't have a lot growing up, and me and Coach Tuyaki were kids. We, us with our brothers used to ride our bikes to the stadium and sit outside and hope to get in. And BYU, after the half, half of the game was done, we'd, they'd open the gates and let us in. We'd go watch the rest of the game. We were usually up. When everyone was leaving, we would be up by 42 points. And we loved every part of it. And so uh, for me to be a player, it was like it was really surreal that I, I was the guy that couldn't afford to get in. And now I'm on the field playing. And as a coach, now you look at me and Tuyaki, every time we walk off the field, it's like pregame. Like, hey, we went from. Two broke kids and now calling the shots, and it's such a good feeling. But that's that's what BYU does for you. It's what the gospel of Jesus Christ does in your life, and um, it's what happens when you have great mentors like Lavelle Edwards and a great coaching staff and great fan base that's there for you all the time. I love your story. Uh, fans, Tuesday nights on BYU TV, break down Cougar football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review. That's Tuesdays at 7 Eastern on BYU TV. We are back after this to wrap up our season premiere of BYU football with Kalani Satake. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Stanford women's volleyball game. Friday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. I think people should care about this show because it's unlike any other show that's on TV. Because our fans have really responded to this show, it shows that people want to be inspired on how to do good and they want to see good things happening for other people. They're cheering their neighbors and their friends on. And I think it gives them a sense of empowerment of, hey, I can do that. And so it's inspiring and we should be looking for the good in the world. That's what makes a show like this so important. Don't miss Random Acts tonight at Seven Mountain.
On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Defend against Platt a lot, we have some fabulous people. First off, Stacy's best friend from high school, who also plays the tuba and the flute. Gildar? Yeah, definitely. And up next, we have Tori's secret admirer bird crush. Kookaburra! Yes! And also a smile that could crush a navy. Nitrous. <laughs> and we have a little something something that we found between Tori's toes. Pinkor. Yes! <laughs> Splat a lot, Mondays at 630 Mountain, followed by Studio C on BYU TV. I got no chill. BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU at Arizona, 930 Eastern, 730 Mountain, Saturday on BYU TV. It is finally here. Game day is Saturday. So good to see this. You can listen to the pregame coverage on BYU Radio starting at 8.45 Eastern Time. Countdown to kickoff is live at 9.30 Eastern on BYU TV. The game itself is on ESPN and BYU Radio with full postgame coverage on both BYU Radio and BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake presented by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. And back to social media for another question for the coach. And that's on Twitter with the uh, hashtag Satake Show from at Cupcake underscore 189. Do you have any pregame superstitions or rituals you do before every game? Um, I did as a player, not so much as a coach. Um, I don't know. Usually if we do something and we win, like I wear a certain hat or a shirt, then I'll probably just try to wear that again the next week. In high school, I would wear it and not wash it, but <laughs> I'm a lot... More mature now, so I'll wash. I'm sure it's washed. <laughs> we know that uh, we have a pregame interview before every game, and mm -hmm. that happens win or lose. So what we do is it doesn't really, doesn't really matter with our conversation. But uh, yeah, I'm usually eating like a Snickers or some candy <laughs> while you're talking to me. So I guess my superstition would be to, I've never tried a game on an empty stomach. Maybe I should try that. It's going to be really hard, but I'll make the <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> you, you coached your first ever game. At BYU, as we talked about earlier, against Arizona, in Arizona. You're back in Arizona for a season opener against that team again. Um, does that bring you back, and does that play into how you think about how crazy it's been or how fast it's gone to begin with? And uh, just how eager are you to finally see what you see, have seen to be so much work in the offseason with players and coaches to get this thing going? Yeah, it's not so much the opponent as much as our team and, and what we're trying to get done. And I know what our guys want to correct. I, I mean, it's just not a good feeling after last year. And we worked really hard on it, you know, and I give a lot of credit to our players and our team. And we've shifted our, our, our mindset on things, you know, just um, rather worrying about what we don't have, just appreciate what we do have, which is a big time fan base, one of the best in the world. And, and, uh, and that we have, um, it, BYU is tough, you know, it's a tough place to be. It's, a, it's, a hard, it's hard to be a student at BYU and a student athlete and a football player. And that's what I want, tough guys, you know. So embrace the fact that it's hard and it's tough. It's why, I've mentioned it before, it's why we remember our mission so much is because it was hard. And so we're, we're telling recruits and telling players that this is going to be a, a difficult four to five years. We're going to ask you to do a lot of things, live a disciplined life, um, do some things hard on, on your physical body, just trying to get bigger and stronger, challenge yourself academically and get a great a, a degree from a great institution and play some great football on some tough opponents. And so it fits what we are, it fits our dynamic, fits how our, our, um, you know, our ancestors were, um, even in the church and the pioneers. And so uh, toughness is gonna be our deal and, and gratitude. Look forward to it all starting on Saturday. Coach, great stuff, we'll see you again next week. All right, that is going to do it. Folks, we'd love to see you here in studio for next week's show. To request seats, go to byucougars.com slash Satake Show after 1 p.m. Eastern next Monday. To reserve a spot in next Tuesday night's audience, we'll talk to you next Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, for Matt Bushman, Preston Hadley, and the coach Kalani Satake. I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Satake, live from Studio C at BYU TV. Good night. Trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sun 
闪闪